Hello and welcome to the Nash Tackle Off The Hook podcast. Just to make you aware, this podcast may contain some explicit slash offensive language. And if that's not your thing, you don't have to listen. But I have given you a warning. I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. You don't know the half of it, but um, I'm anyway. Time, mate. Yeah, I'm, on a, <laughs> I'm skating on the thinnest ice known to man. Like. He said, and um, they put a poison in the tank that just instantly kills them. He went, and we've run out of it, so we cut their heads off with shovels. Suddenly, bang! The whole boat exploded. Take your sort of eight-inch long piranha and imagine that at four, five, maybe six feet. I said, I've revived your dead fish. <laughs> F off, he said. You haven't. That was just humongous. It was... I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I'm just battling this fish out and I'm, I know it's a black man. I'm, yeah. I'm saying I'll never be a naughty boy again. If you catch fish and you return them to the water, then you are my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Dave Levy, welcome back to the podcast studio, mate. You might be the first returner that I've had, maybe. That's it, it's good. Well, you know what they say, mate. You've got to be good if you're invited back. You kept you? me in the retainer, didn't you, mate? <laughs> uh, I do not retain fish, unnecessarily, or people. So, um, <laughs> mate, have you been recently good? Really good, mate, yeah. Been good. This weather's a bit of a Look, sod, isn't it? I'm dressed like a yeti, mate, for a reason, <laughs> because it's absolutely Baltic out there. It's literally, I think it's actually snowed today, hasn't it? As you were coming in. Yeah, it was snowing when I was on my way in, mate. And um, my daughter went to a Christmas party last night. Oh, no. I said to her, don't worry about the time. Call me, I'll come and get you. So 1am this morning, I'm driving through Re- Essex. My van was sliding all over the place. It's like, not the one, is it? Got her home safe. Job done? <laughs> yeah, the Skated job done. Skated home, mate. You've, um, <laughs> we're going to talk about an incredible chapter that's relatively recent, mate. Um, Euro Aqua. But you ain't really stopped there, have you, mate? You've had an absolute blinder yeah. sort of. From that point onwards, to be fair, the whole year, mate, you've had an absolute blinder. But that, subsequently, coming back from that trip, I've seen an incredible PB banked on your um, yep. on your Instagram, mate. And I was like, what have you rolled in? What is going on? Let me just touch you. Touch my rods, Dave. I need some of this look, Do you mate. know what? You know, sometimes you do go on a roll, don't you? And I knew I was on it, Hassan, and I was driving back from your acre, and I said to Paul, when I get home... I'm catching Charlie's motive in two weeks. And that weren't a big-headed comment, right? What had happened, you know, and you've got a situation where you've got that fish going. And that carp, I think, I can think of at least three occasions where it's come out and I've put bait. And it's, you think, I'm going to get that soon, you know what I mean? It's like throwing a dart at a bullseye and you're slightly missing. So I come out of a swim, a guy went in and had it. Then I baited an area. This is a few months later. And it was almost on a full moon every time. Someone had it out of this baited area, and I was thinking, like, no disrespect to them, that fish was eating. It was there because yeah. I put that bait in that swim light, so I knew it was a matter of time. I just had to be patient. And when I was on Euro, at Euro Aqua, we had such a good session. I was on such a high, and when you're like that, you you fishing like excellent because your confidence is high. And I got down there, and I thought it's happening. You know, and I'm having it like, and yeah, I think it was my um fifth fish from when I got back three weeks in. Was it 50 what, mate? Well, 56 pounds, 10 ounces. Yeah, that's yeah. an incredible fish, mate, isn't it? And it was, it was just, I wanted it so bad, Hassan, because it was, because of its age. Yeah. It's 45 years plus. It's about as good an English carp as you're ever going to catch. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think when, that was definitely on an early thinking tackle, wouldn't it, with Ian Russell? And, yeah, and, a photo and of it was. Ian Russell caught it, I think it was the 90s or maybe early 2000s, actually, yeah. um, at 42 pound, Ian caught in a zig. And chili, chili's yeah. at chili. Oh, chili, chili was the first time I ever saw a picture of that fish. Yeah, and he wrote something for um Carp World because he'd caught it exactly the same weight as Dick Walker had caught Clarissa. And he said, like, I wouldn't have cared if it had been. He said, that's the weight I wanted. He said, I'd rather have had it than fifty because <laughs> he wanted to catch a forty-four because he grew up reading Dick Walker yeah. stuff. And I remember thinking, oh, I want to get on there. And quite funny, I put my name down. I could have fished it. I had the gold card one year, right? But at that time, Sutton. Had forty pounders, yeah, yeah. so I was on Sutton. Like you, I wasn't going to drive to Frimley to fish for. They weren't even forty pound then. They mm. were twenty pound commons. Then um, years later, I put my name down and uh, didn't hear nothing for years. And I thought, what's going on here? Like for two, three years, four years, you know. So eventually, um, I rang up and I think I was six and a half years. I've was been on it? that waiting list, yeah. And wow. um, I got through to Lorraine, who who sort of is Mark's wife, who runs it. And I said, Lorraine, I said, um. 
am I ever going to get on? If I'm not, just let me know. She went, well, you ain't even on the waiting list. No. And I said, what, Nigel Sharp, every year, I've got to know this, Nigel, we will go, yeah, I'll put you on the list, Dave, but... Uh, He's done you, you a kid, Oh, mate, mate, he blackballed me. Good angling, Nigel. Yeah, yeah, he blackballed <laughs> me, but... I kept, some people have gone, oh, he was out of order doing that. I said, I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, he but, didn't want you on there. No, of course he didn't, because I'd have showed him up, the little dweeb. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> um, Mate, you've had it. How, how long in total you won there for? Um, so literally a year. Oh, it was about a week and a half over a, a solid That's year. That's mad, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and I ended up with um, 51 fish. What? Yeah, and some of them, like I had um, the big fullies. I was lucky, really, because a lot of the lads that are still on there... Um, trying to catch the mirrors and I sort of caught yeah. the mirror not all of them but I caught some of the good mirrors first like the big fully and Jerry's and um, the big plated so I had three of the really good mirrors like then hadn't got near a common I'd had a 42 and a 40 <clears throat> but there's some massive commons in there mm. and then so everything sort of went in the right order if you like I mean there's still some fish there's loads of fish I ain't caught in there but um I've got this uh Thing where when I've had the big one, mate, I've had the big one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, when I fish a lake, I want to catch the biggest fish in it. Not every single carp in it. You know, when yeah, you get to yeah. a lake, I said, and there's a guy, I'm just after the last 30, and you think, you've had 10, 40, look, mate, go away, get, go and fish for something else. Mm. Life's too short to spend. And I, for the challenge for me is unlocking the water. When you catch them and you unlock it, I kind of lose interest a bit. Even when I'm doing, sometimes I can be doing really well, and it's like, oh, I've unlocked it now. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The challenge <laughs> yeah, is gone. The challenge is gone. So when I have the big one, I do like at the moment, I intended December to fish three nights. I was, I, you can only do two nights a week on Frimley, okay. which I like because it gives you more room to move. But come December, you can do three nights. And I said to myself, like, all or nothing, December, I'm three nights a week because I know she'll do a winter capture. Right. Yeah, and um, it, I was on my last two night when I had her and I thought... Thank God for that. No, three nights. Because last winter I fished hard, like, and um, she had about three chest infections. You know, like, oh, just yeah, literally brutal, yeah, it? Yeah, putting yourself through it. But in your head, you're thinking, like, you know, the, the chances of catching a 50-pound common in the winter. And um, I was so close, but early, I'd caught quite a few fish. I'd had about eight or nine fish in a few weeks. What's the key on there then? Because, like, you've hit that in a year. Obviously, you've had the big one. It'd be, it'd be different, I think, if you went there, just had one bite and it was the big one and job done. That's different. You've had loads of fish consistently, 51 bites or whatever it was. Do you know, I think sometimes is to go in with no preconceived idea. Yeah. So the first night I ever, I ever did, um, I met the bailiff and um, she said to me, um, like, on here... We fished five or six boilies, crumbled up, or a few tigers, a little hook bait. And I was like, um, well, yeah, I said, uh, I'll give that a go. I'd already put 21 spoms over yeah, each rod. Yeah, exactly. like, and that was, that was crumb and broken boily. And uh, Louise went to me, someone told me you put 20-odd spoms out. I went, yeah, I did. She went, that's a lot of bait on here. And um, when she walked off, you know the old doubt, I thought, it's a lot of bait, but there's a lot of big fish in here. You know what I mean? It's, probably, in my opinion, one of the best big fish waters in the country. It's what would be 25-40s. And maybe another 30, 35 plus carp. Easy. Yeah. So I'm not worried about 21 spoms of crumb. No. Like. Then about midnight, Louise comes walking through the dark. I've got a 34. Can you do me a photo? And um, I'm like, straight away, I'm thinking, maybe I've overdone it here. You know what I mean? Like, gone in with my own plan. Yeah. Anyway, in the morning, Louise has come round and said, have you had one? And I said, no. And she went, told you, too much bait. And I said, I had four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it because when one when they come in and there's only one mouthful That's all you it's get. not sustaining the area yeah. when they come in there's 21 spoms of crumb I've got a group of five or six fish feeding for a couple of hours as well because they're not picking up boilies they're picking up little bits it's keeping them preoccupied on the bottom and the more they're there the more chance I've got of hooking one so it really sort of went on from there. Obviously, as the winter went on, it got colder. I knew that it would get progressively harder because mm. I'm starting at the end of October. By January, it's freezing. And I did. I think the lake didn't do a bite at one point for six weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's freezing cold. And I went off and fished somewhere in Essex for a month because I um, emptied one of the other lakes next door into it because they were netting it. And sometimes I think that just switches it off, which is what happened. And then I came back February, fish zigs. But the whole time I was fishing zigs, I got um, the crumb going in. Right. So I think what happens on the water, you get this thing where everyone's fishing a zig because they know the fish are up in the layers, but mm. no one keeps feeding them. 
So that's a really great opportunity to establish your bait. Crumb it up to nothing like a dust. Just put it out there. I, I would put 20 spombs out and not fish over it. Do you put anything in it? Do you wet it? Do you put any liquids in with it? Or is it all just um, neat It's crumb? literally neat. And I add like, um, I might add a liquid, like stick liquid, mainline stick liquid, yeah, squirt yeah. it all out. Just give it a bit of weight. But I'm, say, yeah. I'm honestly not that bothered. A lot of time it it just sinks. If you just drop a spawn to the edge, you can see how it's going to react, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And because I just want that flavour in the water and around the lake, that's what um, I did really. And um, they got on the bait big time. Like, I, mean, I did I did blank, you know what I mean? I had blanks, but nine times out of ten, if I could get in the area I wanted to be, I'd have fish. Like, It's a, it's a regular occurrence, mate, isn't it, on some good complexes. I remember the Carpology video you did at Horton, mate, where you absolutely took that place apart. It was yeah. pretty similar. You established your bait and they were just on it. You were nicking. You weren't even in swims that you think would do particularly well at like. No, exactly. And you were catching them. Yeah, especially with Horton was one <clears> of them. It had like a lot of... About five, maybe four or five full-time anglers. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you caught a fish, you weren't getting back in that swim the next time. So you had to establish bait so that every time you went fresh, your advantage was you had something they wanted, you know. So I, I, I basically did what I've done this year. I set my alarm at 1am and when I'm fishing a lake that's got very deep margins, I have a pole with only two sections on it and I go and feed them. Do you? At 1am in the morning. But I always make sure I don't mess anyone's fishing up. So I'll go, I'll, I'll walk off where no one is, three, four scoops on that bush, bush, three, four scoops on that bush. That's it. I just need to keep it regular, going up and down, up and down. The fish are going everywhere. They're finding this bait, and eventually they're just super confident on what they're eating. You know what I mean? And then it's all about the rig. The rig, mate. What do you have, uh, what do you have Charlie's mate on? I had it, mate. My, I catch everything on it, a blowback rig. Yeah, I know. You know you what I mean? Blow blowback back with yeah. a bit of shrink, shrink tubing on the shank so it can't unset. Super sharp hook, twenty five pound camo X. It's a, I use that pretty much everywhere I go. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and and have done for a long time. The only time I sort of change is if I'm fishing, you know, Ronnies or hinge stiffs, which I do occasionally. You know what I mean? But nine times out of ten, all three rods have got that rig on. And the only thing that will alter is bait size because I can get that rig to act how I want. If I'm fishing eighteen mil boily on it, it's mm. a heavy rig. Mm. If I change that to a little wafter, it's now a very light rig, you know what I mean? So I know the hooking capabilities of that rig are really good. So I, when I hook a 40-pounder, I don't stand there thinking, oh, God, the hook could come out, you know what I mean? I've got that much confidence in it. I think all I need to do is hook the 40-pounder. Then it's coming in, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's what I say, this is coming in, you know? And that's how, how you need to be with uh, your rig. So it's like the hinge stiff. Yeah, I've, mate. I must have caught 100... Over 150 <clears throat> fish on it, I've had one hook pull and I can remember it. Going, I can't believe that come off. You know yeah. what I mean? Such a good rig. It is. I think that's for everyone. That's unanimous. Everyone I talk to. Yeah. Inch diff rig. I, I can't... Oh, I don't want to say that, do I? Yeah. I can't think of one I've lost on it. Touch yeah, no, every bit of wood, yeah, innit? Yeah. But yeah, mate, it's unbelievable for yeah. a lot of people. There are just some rigs, as you say, that are just... If you've got confidence in it, why change it? Yeah. Go for it. And your components might change with time. Yeah, yeah. But that's, the that's the thing with the Ronnie rig. I did suffer with some pulls on that when it first came out. But um, then we was putting hairs on it, right. which is giving you a bit of a deep hook hole. But yeah. then... Um, we done a medium curve with a much longer shank and a kicked over eye. Right. Just eliminated all my hook pulls. No like, dramas. No drama. Now, when I get a, a, a bite on that Ronnie rig with them longer shanked hooks, I know this just nailed, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but when they first started using it, I sort of, I was losing sort of probably two of, two of every five bites. And I was thinking, this ain't good enough. Yeah, you're yeah. fishing on a water where you're targeting one fish. Yeah, you don't be losing them, do you? No, you can't be, you can't be losing carp. Fair play. As if like a fifty pound plus PB common wasn't good enough. That is very much small fry. Can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, in terms of what we're going to talk about, mate, which is a ridiculous week. I'd go as far as saying it's got to be, as a lake as a whole, one of the best weeks on a lake in terms of fish size and numbers of big fish ever. It's ridiculous, yeah. mate. It could huh? be. Yeah, maybe. I remember fishing back home in the UK. Our very own Rich Hewitt was out fishing the lake at the same time as you, yeah. um, who works at Nash. I remember fishing, I think I was with Briggsy. I might have been on Rage but I just remember watching the social media feed of you guys out in Euroaqua and anybody else who was there. And the whole week it was like 80, 90, 100. It looked like every single big fish in there, and there's a hell of a lot of them in there, yeah. but they all decided to come to the party and it looked like, 
one of the best weeks in the history of Euroaqua. I can't confirm or deny that, but it was ridiculous, mate. How did you first of all end up on that trip? Who were you there with? Talk to me a little bit about the background of going on there. Or am, was it even your first trip? Am I right in thinking? No, I've, been I've, a, I've actually been before, Hassan. Yeah, 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 my PB Common, my old PB Common, which was a 71, came from there when we was filming with Ridge Monkey. But um, this particular trip, that was like four, maybe five years ago. But this particular trip, I was sat there and Paul, who was the owner of Ridge Monkeys, called me. And he said, do you fancy going Euro Acre? He goes, um, my mate Ziggy was coming. And he's pulled out. He said, so I've got a space. He goes, and um, do you want to get it? And I said, do you know what, Paul? I said, I ain't spending that money, mate. That's like, it's 1,750 quid a week. It's a two-week trip. I said, if I spend that, mate, my missus, my nuts would be hanging off the washing line. You know what I mean? I'm not spending it like that. And he said, well, look, because obviously he said, if you come along and you do Instagram for a couple of weeks and promote a load of stuff, you know, I'll pay the company's paying. So I was like, well, yeah, all right. I didn't need to ask him twice, you know what I mean? So I was like, yeah. That's all right. And Paul said to me, like, we've been given swim free. He went to the guy whose trip it was, went to him, look, I've got swim free going. And he said he couldn't believe it. It's like one of the best swims on the lake. Why that. is that? Why is it the best swim in the lake? That time of year, it commands a lot of water, a lot of open water. Okay. It's got an island. It's got a back channel. So you've got a lot of places to fish like, in different scenarios so wherever the fish are, they choose to go in snags and behind an island, you've got that. But they choose the open water and the silt to feed on, which in the autumn we know they love. This was October. Was it quite late October? Yeah, lo- end, lo- last week of October, yeah. first week of November. Yeah. Yeah, so Paul was quite excited, like he said, that we couldn't get a better week. Like, and he knows the lake. I've, Paul and Jay have done quite a few trips there, you know. Yeah. So, and I thought, I'm going with a guy that knows the lake well. He's had big fish out of there. It's telling me this is it, you know what I mean? So all the way there, we're, we're mega excited, you know what I mean? Like, we're talking to, Paul knows quite a few lads that fish it, and they said, oh yeah, last week, such and such swim had two fish, one fish had one fish, no, one swim had one fish, and it was it was pretty slow. Mm. And because um, I'm a proper positive thinker, I'm like, everything's ready to be caught. It's coming into the autumn, <laughs> nothing's come out, everything's coming out. That's how I think in my head, you know? And then Paul went, yeah, they said the last two days, because nothing was coming out, the owner's gone, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lo- allow maggots from next week. And he's basically let them have maggots for the last two days. And the swim we was going into had eight fish to 92 pound. Jeez. And we was like, I said to Paul, this is brilliant. I went, because when you go to Euro Aqua, they don't mind, look, you're not meant to take your own bait. Yes. As long as you play the game, take a little bit of yours and buy some of theirs. So they o- Yeah, they're okay with it. If you take the mickey out of them, you're going to get What's a little bit? Give me some content. Because <laughs> oh, oh, 50 the, kilo a week. This is what I've heard, yeah, yeah. right? And this is just going off a bloke who's never been there before. I've heard loads of bait, silly amounts of bait, particle, etc. that you have to buy through the, the owner of the, the lake. Yep. So you get his stuff. He will then put it out on your spot if you want it to be put yep. out on your spot whenever or whatever. But basically you pay a grand and a bit to go and fish it, but then you've got to expect at least double that on a bait bill. If you're, if you're putting in the quantity that's needed to catch all these big ones. That's actually true. Yeah. And that's it, mad. It, yeah. It's expensive, mate. Um, the thing is, if you think I, I took, um, hundred kilo with me, right. It sounds a lot of bait. When you think people put 60 out a day, 60 kilo out a day, a day like, that's nothing. How's that? they fill right, it that's in. That's just mental. Honestly, mate. it's mental, right? It's, I'll be the Northern fishing singles over the top of well, them. This, uh, there's a bit of a funny twist to it all. Like at the end, I did catch one on basically two pouchfuls of boilie and you don't have to do this. The first time I went there, I catapulted boilies and had 50 fish. Did you? Yeah. So like, it ain't like you've got to go down that route. But like going out there and I said to Paul, I don't really want to buy their boilies. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But because they're selling maggots, I said, brilliant. If you're going to pay for something, you might as well pay for maggots. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got there anyway, um, set up. We thought Paul went on the left, I went on the right. And you sort of just fish a middle marker together and then spread your markers out. You know what I mean? But as the recession progressed, we realised that the thing to do was fish everything tight because you're putting maggot in. Yeah, and if you're spreading maggots, right, you want it on a spot. So we start. So we sort of went more spotty as the session went on, but um, basically we sort of got our maggot put in. We had 25 liters of maggot and 50 kilo of hemp. Then on top of that, I'd put a bit of crumb boily. 
And I think the crumb boil is where we um, capit- capitalised on it. You just what, hold them a bit more. Yeah, because what was happening, they'd go out in this boat, put maggots on the spots. Mm. Also, you know, like the spod in it, like linear, they hear the spod. Mm. They hear this boat on there. <laughs> the, w- one of the days we didn't buy any bait, the boat come out and I've got to run. Because as soon as they hear that boat, they know that there's food raining down, you know what I mean? So basically we're um, putting in this maggot on the first day and I went out and put boily crumb where everyone else was getting one or two bites and then the maggot was gone because there's a hell of a lot of silverfish in there as well. Oh, is there? So, yeah, I was so, just going to ask that question. Yeah, they're smashing it as well, but I think it pulls the carp in because it's just a big cloud light. Um, I put a boily crumb in and I think it just sustains the feeding area, a bit like Frimley. It mm. kept them in the area for much longer. The first 24 hours, we said, I said to Paul, let's go for 20 fish for the trip. The first 24 hours. Between you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, bearing in mind what happened, Sorry, pardon me. The two weeks leading up to what we'd done, yeah. I said, if we go for 20 fish and we can both catch a good one, you know, 75 plus, and we was like, yeah, this is going to be a wicked trip. You know what I mean? So the first 24 hours, we had 15 fish to 93 pounds. Jesus <laughs> Christ, mate. Yeah. That's your first 24 five, hours? I think we had five sixties. Yeah. But going, let's let's backpedal slightly. Going, going there, knowing you're going there, you're obviously got on the trip because, mate, your boy's not going. You're you're sort of you've been there before, but you're I wouldn't say preconceptions because you've got a bit of sort of intel. But your feelings towards the place with regards to sort of the type and the prospect of fishing. You said you were ultra positive. You said you had that mindset of right. Well, they're all due. I've yep. got a two two good weeks. We're in a good swim. It all looks good. When you rock up at a venue like that, which has got that many big fish in that much of a sort of, I don't know, a possibility. For you, (laughs) the buzz of going to a place like that compared to sort of your normal fishing or your day-to-day fishing, how do they compare? Because what I'm trying to get at is you're very much a person who is like mentally, I think, is, is the factor that sets you apart from a lot of anglers and why you've caught so many big fish and and battered so many places over the years is because your mindset, your the way you think through things is the difference. For you, those two parallels of UK fishing into a venue like that, how does that play off in your head? What are you thinking? Do you know what I said? They're just carp. Yeah? They're just carp. And they do what every other carp does. They just all live in a different bit of water. And you just have to unlock what they're doing on that water. And on the lake like that, like in England, lakes can be very, um, you know, pressurised. Mm. Even there, if you look at there, mega pressure them fish are under. Saw, every every, every week. Yeah, yeah, every week, pressured. And um, it's quite a funny uh, sort of, mentally, it's just fishing. That's all I think about. Yeah? Yeah, and I'm going out there, I'm fishing 18 pound fluorocarbon, the same rigs that I'm using in England. I think I'm fishing open water. In England, I want to catch 40, 50 pounders. Here, I want to catch... Massive carp. I'm staying on a size four until there's a problem with it. So you ain't changed anything? I ain't changed a thing, mate. I fish for big fish in England, and when I go over there, I fish to land carp, you know what I mean? I'd rather have one bite and la- and land it than five bites and lose three of them. I don't want to be losing fish, you know? I want to be landing everything that works. I'm fishing strong tackle. So I went there with the same setup as I'm using in England, thinking if anything, if there's a problem, I'll then change. Yeah, okay. But luckily, there weren't. There weren't a problem. Hook baits, what, what, what you, I mean, because obviously you're putting a load of bait in, you've got maggots, there's a lot of silver fish. What, what sort of playing in your head before you get there with regards to actual hook baits? Or what have you got intel wise as to what's doing? I turned up, right? You know, like if you go fishing late autumn in England, yeah. I'm starting to find everything down feed wise. Yeah. I used to find everything down hook wise, hook link. I don't do that anymore. No. I find my feed down. So I went there with little chops. You know what I mean? Rubber maggots, like all little bits and pieces. And you wouldn't think like you're fishing for these massive carp, but you find it down. But the re- the thing is, these massive carp, they're no different to the carp you're fishing for in England. They are a carp. And when the winter comes, their digestive system starts to shut down. Yeah, yeah. You cannot feed carp full on boilies during the winter and expect them to be troughing. They're going to come in, pick two or three up and go off because they're struggling to digest it because their metabolism is at such a low rate you crumb that, it's like baby food. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly, it's easy to digest, so you can keep them on the spot. 
It's one of the reasons maggots are so good. They're like 90% water, super digestible. They've got a live signal. You know what I mean? So you add like maggots and crumb to a winter mix, you've got almost a perfect winter mix because you're making the bait digestible and you're having a live food signal. So that was the plan. We're going now. I'm planning to crumb the bait. Then they're saying, you've got the offer of maggots. And I thought, this this couldn't go any better. Mm. You know what I mean? I've got loads of small hook baits with me. And I just fish like little tiny, what they call quads, little square yeah, baits. Yeah. And I've got, I basically tied a, a normal hair rig. And all I've done, through the loop, I tied like six inches of floss, threaded six maggots on, three or four overhand knots, pull them nice and tight, and then push, oh, sorry, mate. And then push the quad up against them because they're acting like a boiler stop now. Yeah. So you basically tip your hook bait with some maggots. Yeah, mate. basically. Yeah, and a tiny hook bait. So when them big carp come in, they're very good at moving slowly, aren't they? And just sucking and blowing, sucking and blowing. I know that that bait's not going to sit on the bottom like a fifteen or eighteen yeah. mil boiler is. It's going to go whoop, straight back. And some of the hook holes were like two, three inches back. I don't just about get my finger on them. Jeez. And I used quite long hook links as well. I lengthened hook links because it was a silty area to um, sort of probably 14 inches, some of them, really long hook links on a light hook bait. And that was because of the lake bed, not because of the size of the fish that potentially yeah, you're Yeah, because getting. of the lake bed, yeah. yeah. And do you know, this is interesting. Years ago, I was talking to Nashi, right? And um, yeah. he, if you speak to Kevin about Warmwell, yes. one of his um, factors that made him do well on there was running leads. So when you fish a water, right, where there's the fish are well pressured, you've got to look for the signs to when to switch over to running leads. And basically, I saw that on Euro Aqua, and I was sitting there, and we was getting a lot of sharp beeps up and down. Sharp, and I said to Paul, "There, that's carp." He said, "Do you think?" I said, "Yeah, they're just getting rid of getting rid of the hook bait." I said, "And changed to running leads." So I reeled in two rods, swapped over to a running lead setup, and literally, them rods kept going. I like, no way. What yeah. are the signs? If, if you said there, what signs are you looking for? Those indications all the yeah, time. Yeah, indica- I remember being on um, a little day ticket, Churchgate. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I was up there, me and my mate are fishing, it's a winter's day, and one rod particularly just kept getting all these sharp knocks. And I said to my mate, that's they just that's, that's bites. And he was like, no. I went, yeah, they're just getting rid of the lead. So I reeled in, put a running lead on, had five fish on that rod. Yeah, wow. Because they use that as they go to shake the head to get rid of the hook, the lead just slides away from them. They can't use they it. They can't use it, and you're, yeah. you're into the fish like. But it was a bit hairy playing um, their mass, some of their massive fish I had, and I still had a four ounce lead dangling around on them. But oh my days! Yeah, yeah. The first twenty four hours, you there? You're obviously with Paul. Paul's fished it a bit. You're in a good swim. You said there that you started by having a central area which you two are both fishing to, and then subsequent spots. Were all your spots that you sort of went out, Mark Pole, etc., or? or decided to fish were they all silty is everything pretty much silt yeah, out I, there no no there was hard spots out was there? there there was gravel but i went for the silt because time I'm, of year this time of year mm. the big carp they love to harvest them areas that's where anything that's left natural and i think they just love feeding in it and it's a lot easier to hook a carp on silt than it is gravel they'll get away with loads less on silt so there's a lot of benefits to fishing silt other than the carp like it so we baited them areas and they sort of kicked off for us. But what we did notice is as they slowed down, we would sort of just move one rod length into the fresher silt and the carp would get back on them. So every now and then it paid just to move left or right. And the guy who's, who's called Michelle, who runs the lake, mm. he's very good with his advice. Like anyone that ignores him when they're there, ignoring him at their own peril. Like yeah. I know when Calder went, he gave them some good advice and they ignored it and they suffered. Yeah. You've, you should listen to this guy because he he lives there. He knows it like the back of his hand. And um, he got, when I was there, he was giving people good advice all week. You know what I mean? For you, w- with regards to those spots, so you got silty spots and you said there what happened over the course of the week is that you channeled up. But this first 24-hour period with regards to the 15-odd fish that you had, how did that actually play out with regards to where the fish came from um, on those spots? Or were they all from that sort of central... Yeah, Shed, no, no, Paul was getting quite a few bites on the left side of our swim, but the problem is it was an island. Right. And there were some horrendous snags there, not that were poking out, so you'd just be playing a fish and bang, you're locked up. Went out in the boat, you're never getting them back. And Paul really did suffer with that side of the swim a few times. Like he was un- I think Paul possibly would have landed a monster as well, like a real like a hundred, because he lost some really big fish down that side. What on those snags? Yeah, so in the end, what we was doing, we, we moved the left hand rod right. 
we skipped all the marker poles to bring Paul's rods away from the island because obviously you don't want to be losing fish. Mm. Even then, you hook one of them fish, you, you can't do anything with a 90 pounder. It does what it wants. I can't believe we're having a conversation about <laughs> yeah. a 90 pound carp, mate. Yeah, and they just go and you're like, I can't do anything with it. And you're bent into the butt and bang, it's getting in a snag, you know what I mean? What? I was lucky. Where I was on the right hand side, Open water, is it? What, what I was doing, I was pulling them to the left to, and they were kiting off right. Yeah. Where Paul had no option but to pull straight at himself, it was a lot harder for him, yeah. The um, How they went down the actual bite. So you get there, it's a long old trip to get there anyway. You're yeah. in your swim. How much have you put out initially This twenty in the first sort of hit for this first 24 hours? So the first um, day we put 25 litres of maggots. They sell them in litres. Right, so that's the so you yep. put 25 out. I thought that's yep. what you had for the whole the week. No, 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 it's a day. Jesus There's 25 litres of maggots gosh. and a 50 kilo of hemp and about 10 kilo of crumb. That is some bait. Yeah, yeah. In it? That's every day. Some people were doing that twice a day. <laughs> that is <laughs> yeah, madness, mad, yeah. mate. But when you think about, the, I don't know, I mean, that I can't compare it to any place I've ever fished in my whole life. But when you think about the stock, you, we were saying there off camera, the stock, he reckons, what does he reckon in terms of there's 40, 40 kilo carp in there. That's 88 pound. 40 carp over yeah. 88 pound. Probably, there may be 7 to 10 over 100. And the current... World records from there, isn't it? Yeah, the current world record, which I think they call five scales. Right. That didn't come out this year, because that's another thing. They don't come out every year, these fish, which is surprising. Like. I was saying this to you, mate. Yeah. You were like, you were playing it down before we started talking about this podcast, and you will continue to play it down, because I know you. But I, I follow it. I know Alex from Clearwater's fished it, a few lads up north fish it a lot, and they don't come out. I mean, if there's one of those big ones a week, that's a brilliant week. Yeah, he They says, don't yeah. come out a lot. No. At all, let alone whatever happened over that yeah, two yeah. weeks that you guys were out there. It's mad. Yeah, I think like it was one of them where all the planets aligned. We had the right bait, the right temperatures. We had some nice warm days, chilly nights. The fish were getting down. We could have caught fish at night. But what happened, um, we was getting the bait in the morning. Obviously, it's expensive. Mm. And then they went, do you want bait in the evening? And I said to Paul, I'm not being funny, Paul. I don't want to be reeling fishing all night. I said, we're putting the bait out in the morning. We're getting five, six fish a day. That's well. I said, at night, we sit back, have a beer, <laughs> have something to eat, relax, chat, put the world to rights, and then in the morning, put the bait in, we catch fish. And Paul's like, yeah, bloody right. And that, that is how we When fished. did you make that call? Just after that first 24 hours? No, probably about four days in. Yeah. You know, because it takes you a bit of sort of, right, what should we do? Like, you're just trying to catch fish at this point, you know what I mean? But I think it was on the the second day, I had the first big one, and it was sort of, you know, when you go there, you're hoping for a, an 80, you know what I mean? You think, oh, if I could have an 80 pounder. I'd caught one four years before at, um, in Croatia, an 88. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, since then, this is the first venue where I could realistically beat my PB. You know what I mean? Like, So on the second day, the rod's gone and I've had a 93 pounder. I was, Mate, you can't just skip through that. How's <laughs> that? F- like, you've had some good fish. What's your first first few fish? Talk me through size-wise before you got to Our first four fish were 60 pounds. So 60 pounders are massive fish yeah, full yeah. stop. When you get that take and you lift into that fish, what is what is the difference between picking up on a 60 pounder, which is the stuff of dreams anyway, and picking up your rod and going, oh, is there like... Yeah, to- there's a very, there's a massive difference. Mate. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Yeah. you pick out the rod and uh, old Big J used to say to me, you've got to do the pull test. The so pull you know, test. now when you lift into a fish and you pull into them... Yeah. And you feel the head go, boom, yeah. boom. And they cut, they don't, they just stay there. You, you pull them and it just bounces. You think, it's like you've got the lake bed on, you know what I mean? And then they just move off nice and slow. And the 90s, be honest, the 90 was fighting, like, reasonably hard, like. And as it come up, I see it and I thought, yeah, it's a 70 pounder, you know what I mean? That's 70 pound. And it's gone in the net and uh, Michelle, the guy that runs the place, he was helping us. At this point, we've got like three fish on. Three fish on at the same, yes, while you're fish at the same time, yeah. Oh my So Lord. Paul's had a 60 and a 50, and I've had this 90. And um, we've got the fish in the net, and I thought, yeah, 75 pounds, that's a really good carp, like. And Michelle looks in it and went, Oh, I know that fish, 40 kilo. I thought, fuck off. Yeah. You know, this is big, my biggest carp, no way, like. And I'm looking at it, that ain't. Anyway, he's got, we've got it out, got it on the scales, and it's gone around to 93 pounds. And I'm like jumping all over the place, you know what I mean? Can't believe it. Lost not, your head, yeah. Yeah, it's like day two, you know what I mean? I've had a 93 pounder. 
yeah, really, we're all celebrating and all that. And then you say, after you put it back, you know what it's like? As soon as you've had a big fish, you think, yeah. I want another one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you, you, uh, you think you're in beast mode at this point. You're fishing hard. You want to land it. You know, you want to really get into the group of fish. So I just carried on. And um, I think that the next day, Paul had his PB, had an 88. I remember seeing a picture of that. Yeah, yeah beautiful carp. So Paul's had an 88 and a 71. We've had a, we're having fifties and forties like regular like Paul because he's done I don't know he's done five maybe six trips there he ain't getting fifties out he's unhooking them in the Fuck net and him. letting them go yeah but I'm still I'm like come off it I'm photographing them and I was it's getting yeah I was getting them out like I weren't getting forties out because you do have you do have quite a lot of like forty three forty four pound fish just seem to be about the average is that like, the, I mean that's a mad average isn't it? yeah yeah so we weren't getting them out but you had I, no like twenty pounders no thirty pound. Very few. Well, I can remember sort of 120. Wow. Yeah, 120. Because <clears throat> I remember thinking, God, it looks tiny, you know. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, But um, we had a lot of, I'd say we had a lot of 40 to 47 pound fish. Yeah, that's an incredible average yeah. size of carp, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, when yeah. you put it in context, that's mad. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, it's, it's the only place, the thing is, you soon, you always fall into suit, didn't you? So if I was in France, like if I was at Abbey Lakes and I had a 45, Ooh, yeah. yeah, what a nice fish, I'm getting it out. But there, it's a totally different ball game. You, yeah, of course. It's levelled up, so you know what I mean? So you move to the level you're in, but I'm still getting 50s out. You know what I mean? I still, I remember laying them on the on the mat, a few of them, and thinking, like, oh, that's £55. In England, I'm rolling around the floor if I catch a £55, oh, you know what yeah. I mean? So I just to take a bit of time to appreciate them. <laughs> Paul's like, no, get it, get rid of it, <laughs> get rid of get it. That out, <laughs> We're here for monsters, like, yeah. But I remember, because Paul's a... He's a big old lad, isn't he? He's yeah, not small. Yeah. He's a proper lump, Paul. I yeah, remember yeah. him holding up that 80, and I'm just thinking. And it's so hard, like, I'd imagine you, being there in the flesh is completely different to whatever any camera can transmit to a person. But I do remember just, like, one shot of that big and that 90. And me and Briggsy looked at it. It's definitely I was with Briggsy. And it was the whip. There was a shot of it. Either in the net or you holding it in the yeah, water. Yeah, that was the common net one. Yeah, was that, I remember yeah. the width of it and just thinking that is yeah. not a cop. It's, it's basically like a little baby it was the same whale. width as my chest. Yeah, it was like a it baby was, yeah, whale. It was the same width as me. Yeah, I'm mean, thinking that is just obscene. Let alone obviously the rules are you have to you have to have them in the water, don't you? So you weigh yeah, them yeah. and then they go in the water. Yeah, for so photos. you get them out, weigh them, and then back in the water for the photos. Which um, <laughs> Paul, we, me and Paul lost a couple of fish like that. I was going to say and, uh, there's, there's one on my blog. I sort of blogged the whole thing. We didn't <clears> film it professionally. I just took my camera and I went to Paul, do you know what? I'll get a little bit of it on film. Because <laughs> we didn't really intend to film it. It was more of a, let's do a bit of social media stuff, a bit of a crack, very rarely get to fish with each other. And yeah, me, yeah. me and Paul get on really well as mates. So we just it was a bit of a social, you know what I mean? But when it unfolded, we was like, shit, I better get a bit of this on camera, you know what I mean? It's some, really right. gold, some gold here, you know what I mean? The spot you said there that you over the course of time you started to sort of refine and fish tighter and tighter. What yeah. sort of range are we talking about? Because when I think of Euro Aqua, the lads that have come back have said that it's a fair old range that a yeah, lot of them are fishing it's, at. It's a reasonable size water. The, the middle's like 35 wraps. Is it? But what I didn't want to do, Hassan, so the middle was their safe zone. Yeah, yeah. And I can cast. I could have fished 35 wraps. Yeah, yeah. But what you're doing then, right, is you're going into the safe zone. And that, what that's going to cause is the fish to spread out all over the place. So what we did, we fished, and it was only talking, do you know Dan Wildborn, I went to fish bill with him. Yeah, yeah. I was having a discussion with Dan about areas, you know, fish in the front of areas or the back end. He said, when we're match fishing on the big water, he said, we fish the back of the area with the line through the bait. Because I've always fished no line through the yeah, bait. no I, line through the bait. Well, why is that? And he said, because what they'll do, they'll move out to the, the, the zone you can't get to them, and as they come in, they'll pick off the edge of that area. He said, so I want to fish the back of the bait. Did you get your bite first? Yeah, yeah. So I thought it makes total sense. like, And um, that's, that's pretty just much... just dodgy casting while yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. So I literally, off of what Dan told me, use that. You know, every day's a school day. I've been carp fishing. Don't over... credit wild ball no, with catching probably, mate. carp, mate. <laughs> it, no. it was. And, uh, I'm going to told... this out, Dan. Anyone, mate. Do you know what? I go on tutorials. I take tutorials. Yeah. And I'm on a tutorial. Someone who's only been fishing... Like a few years ago, oh look, I've been doing this, and I think it's a good idea because he's thinking outside the box. He ain't yeah. got the influence of everything around him. Yeah, and you you get good ideas off of people. Not that Dan's a noddy, <laughs> but Dan gave me this idea, and when we got there, I thought, right, I can fish thirty odd wraps. 
or shall I try that? And that's what I tried. I baited the front and fished the back. And they so would what was sit the difference long. there? So you're obviously the baiting's pretty spread, but you've got some markers out there with regards to it. The difference in terms of you, you sort of, are you talking the spread was what, what another half a wrap or something like that? What are we talking? Yeah, like we're, we're baiting an area the size of this room, which is oh. what, like 15 foot round. Yeah, yeah. And then putting three rods in it. Yeah, so it's quite tight. Yeah, isn't it's it? tight. Yeah, and you could, you go. I'd have the marker pole out. You know, the ones that just dip over yeah, as you yeah. fish. I'd, I was going one on the left, and then like bang, bang, and then the middle marker. At one point, I did have one that was meeting Paul, but when Paul kept losing these fish, yeah, it came. Yeah. I said let's get rid of that and just yeah. fish that middle on this one to give more chance of getting the fish in. Like, because if you think about, I don't know. I mean, I can't. You know, but like a ninety pounder is a big old lump on a spot. Tails up, feeding. 15 foot, you could still get quite a lot of them in that space, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I think that at times we, we had four or five massive Big carp ends. in the area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With In terms of the actual venue as well, you said there they had that safe zone. They show in that safe zone. You see them absolutely yeah, clustering I saw them, out. Yeah, mate. When, I'm not joking here, sir. And I was laying there some nights and I'd list, I'd be laying there and I'd just start laughing because it, it was a joke. It was like someone was chucking a washing machine in. So, <laughs> I can't like, imagine. I sat there and I, was, I just start laughing. Like every night it was like that, you know what I mean? Like not loads, but you'd hear three or four through the night. And a couple of times it was clear that they were coming around the margins and clearing up. Really? Because they were 30 yards out. And I thought these fish at night are coming in close. They're coming in around the back channel on this island. So I kept that back channel baited all week with just boily with a catapult. And um, I think through the first week it done me about three or four fish. I was sticking a single rod up there to like mid forties. And then, um, the second week I baited it. And on the last day, just off a of boilie, I had an 85, 12. Jesus. Yeah. That was my last fish of the trip. Literally as we was packing up. Just boilies literally yeah, down the little channel. Just boilies down that channel. Yeah. Cause I, I, just from what I'd heard, I thought them fish, they're not staying out there at night. They're coming in, in the day they were pushing out and they were just bouncing off the bait. But, Mate, that is absolute. What a venue, mate. In terms yeah. of it's just that's unfathomable to like a person who's never been there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What do you do with that in your head? You're very good at sort of sectioning it, but like, and we'll talk about the rest of the week and how it's panned out because obviously you had a, a bigger one, well, a few bigger ones. But the actual going back to normality after it, you've been there. Like, had that couple of weeks. I know you've had Charlie's mate, but you're going on Frimley where you're catching. 40 pounders, yeah, That's 30s. 50 if you're lucky, yeah. 30, 40, some 20s as well scattered yeah. in there. I don't know what, does it, is the buzz the same? Does it keep you motivated? I'm not what, joking what? you, mate. I got back right and I met my mate James over at Frimley for a bit of a social and he was going, oh, we've got to have a beer, tell me about the trip. We built a bonfire. I'm actually telling you, my rod went right, so it's my first fish since I got back and I got it in there and it was a 30 pound, six ounce lever. Yeah. I was over the moon. I was like, look at that. That's the, absolute, that's the absolute bollocks to lever. I, I just love carp, you know what I mean? And the fact that one's under a pound and one's 23 pound, but it's it's a nice fish, you know what I mean? I, I just love carp fishing. For me, it ain't all about just catching a carp. It's about the hunt of the carp, the bite, the playing them, the sitting there early morning watching the sun come up, watching the sunset, sitting in your bivy in the pouring rain, watching it hit the wall, just loving carp fishing as a whole, not just... And when people go, where'd you go from a hundred pounder? I go, I'll mm. go carp fishing, mate. That's what I do. You know what I mean? I, I That's don't... fair play because I know a lot of people who just fish there for the big ones and they're, they've got a similar mindset in a way that they're target anglers and they like big fish, but they don't fish in the UK anymore, mate. mate it's like some lads who come back from Rainbow. Like, deep down, and I'm not insulting them, deep down. <laughs> You're digging them out. In the pit of their belly, they're not carp anglers. <laughs> well, they're trophy in hunters. The pit, yeah, they're trophy hunters. The pit of their belly. Sit there, mate. If you went to me next week, do you want to go and fish this lake? The biggest fish is £27, but they're like, the, the fish are so nice looking. The lake is beautiful. I go, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I love carp fishing and, and every aspect of it. Fishing for £100. Like when you drive on to Euro Aqua, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You're like, oh my God, the biggest carp in the whole world, yeah. common and mirror, is in front of me now. You know what I mean? Like, I've been a carp fisherman since I was a little boy, and at the moment I'm fishing for the biggest carp. It's like pinch me moment, you know what I mean? It is holy grail stuff in terms yeah. of size of carp, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I was speaking. I was speaking to Nashi actually before when when uh, before he came in, and he was talking about 
the numbers are big fish, but where else do you go? There's the odd 80 pounder, the odd 90, the odd 100. Yeah. But it's the odd fish in a big old venue, which is not easy to to potentially go and single out. Whereas, as you say there, if you're saying there's 40 fish over 40 kilo, I and mean... it's a weird thing. Do you know how you set yourself a target in your head, Hassan? You go... Yeah. I was sitting there, and I, at the end of that week, when we'd caught them fish, I said, I'm going to go and catch a 90 somewhere else now. Is that, is that what you I'm going to do it, mate. <laughs> I'm going, I'm going to go and do it somewhere else. Because people will go to you, because people with car bangs, you always get a lot go, yeah, yeah, you've done well, mate, but they like to have a little dig. Oh, they all got put in there from that lake down the road, under a pound, which they didn't. They got thrown in small because they eat carp out there. So they buy them, buying carp's easy. They've grown that big in that lake because of the amount of food they get in that lake. It's mad. And I, th- and I think, well, I'll go and do it somewhere else. Because it's just carp, and um, I've wrote down four venues, and I won't mention them at the moment. No, obviously, that contain ninety pound carp, <laughs> and um, that's that's it. And then you just go, well, that's what I'm going to do, or or I'm going to find a public water seventy. You know what I mean? Like go, just always some sort of target you can set yeah, yourself. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? The, the road doesn't end at Euro Acro; it begins. I love that, mate. It's a very positive way. If you like looking at it, I often see the parallel of people who've come back and had really good weeks on there. Um, the rest of the sort of session, talk to me about maybe not necessarily the fish captures, but how the actual structure of the sort of day is. Is it as a venue where food's bought to you swim? Do you go centrally to sort of somewhere to eat your food? Yeah. I I I'm not really seeing how the Basically, sort of workings of it, it is, if you like. For your money, you get your food and your drink. So you've got a fridge in your swim, Wi-Fi, and they stock the fridge with soft drink and beer, if, whether you want it. At half two, everyone reels in, goes to dinner, the dinner's all right. Some of them were a bit dodgy. Some of them were really nice. What <laughs> like, you have? What sort of dinner are we talking about? Oh, you know, like some days it was lamb and chips and things like that. You know what I mean? Another day it was what? Bulgarian stew. And I was like, Ooh, is yeah. this cat? <laughs> you know? Ooh, but, yeah. No, but it was quite nice. You know what I mean? And the people that run the place, they couldn't be more welcome than me if they tried. You know what I mean? They're lovely. You go in there and they're like, do you need a drink? They're like really accommodating. There's clean showers there. What's the chap like? I've heard he's a bit... He's a bit mad. He likes a tipple, doesn't he? And does all sorts of crazy stuff. Do you know what Alex, who who owns it? Yeah, <laughs> Alex is crazy, right? But nice, crazy, right? You know I mean? yeah. he's, a, he's a nice fellow. I really like him. I like crazy people anyway. I think they got character. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you, know, you you spend a lot of your life jumping out of planes, mate. So I reckon <laughs> yeah, yeah. you might have something in common with them. Yeah, but the, um, and then you've got obviously his daughter and her boyfriend. So the daughter and the boyfriend sort of run the bait side of things, okay. and Alex runs the lake side of things. So. They're two different businesses. So you can see when they get a bit upset when people take the mick with the bait because their business is the bait. His business is the lake. So when you go there, there's two businesses at that place. So that's why you have to play the game a bit. It seems like that's a bit of a grey area, mate, the whole bait stuff, no? It definitely is. Like, like Michelle was fished it before he was actually with Alex's daughter. So he knows the score. So he's it, pretty sound. He's sound, honestly. He's as good, long as you good don't. Good angler. And he just says, don't take the piss out of me. You know what I mean? And, What's and that line, it. though? I don't know that line, Michelle. I don't know. You're talking don't about know. putting 60 kilos in a day, yeah, Michelle. Yeah. You're not talking they, about... They want you to buy bait. Because obviously it's, it's business. Like, But you've just got to work out how much bait you're going to use. Like someone said to me not long ago, oh, I'm going to go, but I'm only going to do it once. It's a trip for a lifetime and I'm going to take, I'm going to spend five grand on it. And then, and then someone else that whizzed with some lads and one of them went, five grand. And I went, well, I know guys that go out tuna fishing for 800 quid a day. Mm. Do you know what I mean? They go tuna fishing off a of Cornwall yeah. and they're paying 800 quid for a day's fishing. So, you know, like we're all obsessed with this. We all spend stupid amounts of money on it. So like... It's it is mad. what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It is what it is. And you've got to, by the sounds of what I've known and, and, and I've seen it even in the short time you talked about this session you've got to be prepared to play that same game. Yeah. Like, I reckon it's it's one of those, isn't it? Like, you can do something different and it can work, but if you don't have something that is in the same sort of keeping of what's caught in the past historically and works, yeah, yeah. You, it's too much of a gamble, isn't it? To be on there and yeah. gamble for the whole two weeks. Yeah, exactly. To go out there and think, right, well, I'm going to go there, but I'm not going to spend any money on bait and I'm just going to try and catch them on boily, catapulting. Yeah, you could do it. You know what I mean? But personally, if I'm going to spend that amount of money, I'm going to make sure I'm backed mm. up when I go there. And if I don't spend it when I'm there, great, I come home. And you just never tell the missus. 
just hide those receipts yeah. Yeah, deep, yeah. deep, deep in the yeah. archives. Just write them off, mate. It's a Ridge Monkey expense. Here you but go, yeah, Paul. I, was, I was lucky. I was there <laughs> That's a on a work sort of uh, basis with Paul. and um, That is a belter. Talk me through the rest of the week fish-wise, mate, capture-wise in terms of what went on. What so you started on a mega high that 24 yep. hours. You said about four days in you decided that I ain't going up all night and, and yeah, reeling yeah. fish. I'm, I'm going to bait in the morning yep. with that same amount every time. Was it yeah, through the 25, course of 25 litres of maggots, Jesus. 50 kilo of hemp, 10, 10 or 20 kilos of crumb. And um, we're doing that every day. Bear in mind, there's people putting in way more than us. Like, way more. They're, get, they're twice a day baiting. And um, we, But the thing is, it's not a competition. Just do what you're relaxed. And we're relaxed to catch a few fish through the day. Me and Paul are very relaxed when we fish. We don't get fussed over anything. We go, oh, and that's the, both of us got very similar attitudes to it, you know. So it's like, yeah, we'll have a nice day, easy night, good night's sleep, another nice day. And um, I think it was on about, it was the Monday because there was a changeover. Me and Paul had had, um, I think, 44 fish for the week. Lots of sort of half decent fish, if you like, for that venue, uh, including a 93 and an 88. And um, I said to Paul, the lake had emptied out. There was only two other anglers staying for another week. Okay. And um, I said to Paul, I'm going to go out in the boat and put a load of poily crumb in. And he went, yeah, do it. I said, so I've gone out there and I've put in about 25, ki- sorry, pardon me, 25 kilo of just crumb. Okay. Not a single boily there. What depth of water are you fishing over here? Um, I think it was 14 foot. Okay. Yeah, so a nice depth. I've gone out in the boat and I've put all this crumb in. Then they've turned up. We put the maggot in over the crumb. And I remember sitting there thinking, we might have overdone it here. And Paul mm. went, I think we've overdone it, like, because we're normally getting bites now. And um, we were sat there, Paul's on his computer working because he never stops. And I looked out over the markers and I could just see the the odd pin prick, like mm. bing, bing, bing. And then Paul's rod's gone and he's playing this fish. He's got it in, like, and he said, oh, that's a common, that's a, a big common, like. And we've weighed it, it's 82 pound. And sorry, not 82, 72. Right. So it was a 72 pound common. Oh, flop it back. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm surprised Paul didn't. <laughs> and so we've gone along this reed line and I'm photographing Paul's 72 and mm. my left hand rod's gone. So I've come running out in my waders and I filmed the whole thing for my blog because I just happened to have my phone in my hand. Right. And I've run up and the left hand rod's going. I've picked up the rod and I, I instantly knew, I don't know why, I knew it was 100 pound. What do you in, mean? Just saying in my head went, this is it. But this... you saying that on every time you pick one up and it's like a good one, no? Yeah, no, no, mate. I don't know why, <laughs> right? It was weird. My mate Mark Rush, he went to me, you're going to have £100, mate, I'm telling you. This is before the trip? Yeah, no. I, I, told, I rang him said, I've had a 93. Me and Mark have fished together since we were yeah, kids, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I said, oh, I can have a £93. And he's like, mate, you're getting a bigger one. And I said, I, I think I am, you know what I mean? <laughs> I've picked up this rod. I don't know why. I sang, like a little voice on my shoulder went, this is the one. This is your £100, you know what I mean? And it just kited, and it kept kiting for about 70 or 80 yards, just on one straight line. Couldn't do anything with it. And then every now and then, it would just dump itself. like What, like a Just on the bottom. Literally, the bottom. honestly. Like, literally, the only way I could explain, like a stingray. And I'd think, that's fucking, I snagged me. Oh, I snagged. And I'd pull into it, and it'd go, come off the bottom. Oh. And you'd feel a head kick, and you'd think, oh, I've got it moving again. And then I realised what it was doing. And there was the odd branch and things on the bottom that we was losing fish off. So I thought, I need to keep it off the bottom or the line away from the bottom. So I had the rod very high. Mm. And I'm playing this fish and, um, I don't know, 10 minutes and it's fighting, dumping itself, fighting, dumping itself. And eventually it's coming up and Paul went, do you want me to film this on my phone? And I, and I looked at Paul, I said, no, just just net it, mate. Mm. <laughs> I and mean, my legs were going at this point because I thought... This is massive. And then it cuts. Did it feel so, bigger than that 80 pound you've had before? The 93, sorry. Did no, it feel you, bigger than that? Do you know what? It did. It felt heavy, but no fish has ever fought harder than the 88 had out of Croatia. Like that was right. just an animal of a carp. But this carp was just slow, heavy. And when it went off, it'd go off like for 25 yards mm. and you're doing nothing with it. You ain't even trying. So you think, what's the point? I'm going to pull the hook. Yeah. So I'm, I've got good tension. I'm just trying to control what this fish is doing. And then eventually, as it's come up, it's rolled. And I went to Paul. Oh, my God, it's a £100. Pounder. <laughs> I said, get the net under it, mate. Get the net under it. And Paul's netted it. And um, he's going, Dave, that's fucking massive, mate. <laughs> like, and um, we put it on the scales, sort of sorted it out, got it in the bank, lifted it up. It was a fish called Blind Eye. 
And this is how that Michelle knows Lake. He was going to a blind eyes due. It'll be out this week. It's so due out. No. Yeah, literally. And anyway, I've, he, he, he looked at it and that's blind eye. And he said, this fish could be a hundred pound. And now you're thinking, what's gone on? I you don't know, know what, a uh, hundred pound and carp. Just, and it, just blows it, your mind. Mad. You know what I mean? So they've got it on and um, we've weighed it. And um, Paul's gone, oh, you're going to have to have a look. I'm too, I'm too busy jumping around. You know what I mean? Like, lost it. I'm going, no, and he said, it's hundred pound, Dave. And I'm like screaming my head off, going, come on. Like, Fucking hundred <laughs> pound. Yeah, hundred pound. I couldn't believe it. And then I took it off and I went to Paul. What was it? hundred and what? He went, oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> that's what Paul's like. It's hundred like, pound. Yeah, let's put it back on, shall we? Yeah. So lifted him back up and let it settle. It was a hundred and one pound and two ounces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two ounces, mate. You yeah, hundred and one pound. I was like... Hell, you know Are you I mean? normally a, a, a like a shouter, a screamer? Not at all, mate. I was going to say what? you're pretty. In the state. I remember having this seventy at Abbey, and I got it in, and I went, "Oh yeah!" The, and it was the late record out of Attila. And Paul went to me, "Come on, Dave, show some emotion." And I went, "I'm not really like that, Paul. You know what I mean? I like yeah. it's a nice fish, and I'm happy." Like, but when I had that hundred pounder, my head went. I've seen a video. Of yeah, you. yeah. I oh, mate, my head was gone. I was like. That's cool, a fucking hundred pounder. <laughs> it's like, it is crazy. Do you think you'd ever think you'd ever catch a hundred pound carp? Yeah. Like, that's mad, isn't it? Mate, I'd like, take me back to being a little boy in Barking Park Stream. Yeah. With a pair of my mum's tights on a coat hanger, catching sticklebacks. You know what I mean? Now, all these years forward, I'm standing there with one of the biggest fish in the world. In a, you, know also, I mean? you think like... In comparable terms, in terms of like the buzz, the feeling, it's probably in in modern day terms as close as you're gonna get to that first carp, isn't it? Yeah, it takes you back to like yeah, definitely shaking. Yeah. Like not sh- you get shaking knees anyway with big fish, but I'm yeah. talking this is this will be different now. But it's two nearly two and a bit times bigger than anything you've ever caught in yeah. UK terms. Yeah, yeah. The the perspective is just mad. Yeah, it's Isn't it? a, a crazy carp, mate. Like, um, I actually was fucking emotional. I'm not going to lie. I was looking yeah. at it thinking, this is a joke. You know what I mean? Like, that, <sighs> yeah. that is unfathomable in terms of holding it up for a picture. I mean, 50 pounders, they're an absolute ag. So, yeah. like, let's face it, they're heavy, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? That thing I in think- the water. That can't be an easy. Do you know what? It's weird. The bottom was hard, so it was quite easy right. to get a good foot in. And because they're the entire width of your arm, you know, like when you hold a 40 or a 50, they're halfway up your arm. Yeah, your wrist you're sort of is, trying yeah, it's to... horrible. With them, it's almost... It ain't easy, but because it was sat straight against my bicep, I, all I had to do was almost do a squat, come up. So you're just hugging it, basically. Yeah, yeah, you? you are literally just hugging it. I didn't want to do the... I wanted to hold it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it was. A, it wasn't too hard, to be honest. It was all right. Mate, that is just obscene. Hook hold on that fish? What are we talking? Um, Just nailed in the bottom lip. Like, you know, probably about an inch in. What does a mouth. size four look like in that, man? It's just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was like, like looking in a 40 and it, and it having a size 12 in it. Yeah, exactly. You like a little I mean? matchup. Yeah, it disappeared. Just buried. Like, it was on forever, that fish. I weren't losing it. Unless it found a snag, you know. That's what you want, mate, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it, what about bait? Is it, was it passing bait in a net? Had it been through a load or? Um, do you know what? Because you can't really retain them. You don't oh, see yeah, that. But we yeah. did have a few where we had them right at, like, you know, about half hour before light. So we left them. Yeah. And it was just hemp, maggot. It's yeah. like just full of, the slings full of shit within 20 minutes because they're just eating so much food. Like Absolute machines, yeah. mate, isn't they, by the sounds of it? They're just going around this week. As, well, these two weeks, they've just been going around absolutely mowing yeah. it, haven't they? I think they were just, it was that getting ready for a winter feed up as the old... It don't really happen that often anymore, I think, because bait's so good. They're, mm. You know what I mean? But they were on a feed up. It weren't just me that did well. There was a lot of other lads on the lake that week that did well. There was a yeah. couple of Polish lads next to me, real lovely fellas. They had, I see them have a 96. What do you go, say you photographed that week? Forget your fish, just take them out of the equation. 25, maybe 25, 70s, six, six 90s. Um, your lad from Nash... Um, yeah, Rich. Rich, of 90s lovely show, fella. Him and his dad, lovely people. Yeah. I went round, photographed a sixty and a ninety nine for them. 99. Came back, photographed a ninety six for someone else. Walked back round and photographed another ninety six mirror for someone. And I, I sat down in my bivvy that night, like this place is off the scale. <laughs> like this, it's, it's a normal. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's crazy. 
What's the in terms of the actual water? Like how how big are you giving it? I size say, wise, I reckon thirty acres. Thirty acres. Yeah, that 30 is some acres. biomass of fish. Yeah. Well, that's why I believe they've got they've got pumps going all the time. Have they? They shut it in the summer and just oxygenate it. Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah. what they do, he, he was telling me when he was there, he's getting a computer system fitted into his house so he can even mo- monitor the um, oxygen and everything just from his looking on the computer. I was going to so say. So he knows when to put the pumps in and all that, like, but... Because there will be, it. there will be, if you look at it, I bet you there'll be, like, optimum sort of, like, oxygen levels, obviously for feeding in terms of time of year, moon phase. Yep. There's loads of factors that can come into it, but the sort of converse side that probably anglers don't look at is there's that many biggins, there's that much bait going in, yep. there's that much excrement, there's oh, the mate. chance there, mate, of flipping all yeah. sorts of oxygen. I know one of the guys oh. next to us, they, we had two Polish lads next to me, and they were crazy, real lovely fellas, and... Uh, <laughs> When he had his 90, he got a big handful of water. I don't know what I done. He threw it in his mouth. Went, and I was like, no. Just, he was on the toilet all night. What are you doing? <laughs> Literally, man? right? He said, I've not got off the toilet. Although that could be the two litres of Jack Daniels that him, me and him drunk. <laughs> mate, I was going to say, do you, you must have celebrated that. Yeah, when mate. I had the 90, um, and he had the 90, he come down. Um, oh, I wish I can't remember the guy's name. I apologise for that. But he said, Dave, we must get drunk. And I went up and they had one. It was a no, the Nash done the big square thing. <laughs> he had one of them and had a bar in it and he had a two litre bottle of JD light. And, oh, um, Paul had a couple of drinks and went back because he's working. And um, I went, I'll be back in a minute, like 4 a.m. the next morning, <laughs> two litres of JD gone. And <laughs> that's yeah, we had a good celebration. Mate, I think that's well due if you're having not a 93 pounder. And that 100, 101, was it? Yeah, 101 pound. My God, mate, that is absolutely mad. The rest of it, because that wasn't it, mate. You had uh, a load no, of so others. A few days went by and um, I said when I was doing my blog, I said, there's a lot of big commons in here and the commons in Euracra are really nice looking. Like we know the Euracra fish are quite plain, quite big pale, big old yeah, mirrors. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, but the commons, they're, they're quite nice like. And um, Paul went, we need a big common, you know what I mean? We've had we've had loads of good fish, a big common has set it off. And um, the next day, you used to get like, they'd come in, you'd get hit. Paul's playing one again, and I've picked up the rod. And it was a bit like a dog on a lead, this fish. It just came straight towards me all the way in. But I knew it was big because I thought, this is coming towards me because it wants to. You know what I mean? It knows the score. Yeah, yeah, no. D- d- not so much <laughs> no score because this one hardly, it's the big, I think it's the biggest common in the world, that fish. So it came, it came across the front of me, and as it come up and rolled, I thought, holy shit, that's massive. Like, oh. straight away, I knew it was a 90-pound common. And it sort of went to go off, and I just turned the net, and, and sort of in it went. And I looked in the net, I said, Paul, I've got a massive common. He said, how big? And he's netting his fish, and as I'm talking, the other rod goes. So now I'm playing this rod, right? I've got this common in the net, got this fish in. That was a 67 then I mean, that is, I'm, I'm, even in the course of this podcast, when you started and said first 24 hours, you've had a few 60s, I've been like, mega. Then I've just gone 67, don't we? Really yeah, yeah. No, no. So <laughs> I've got that. Then I had a 54 that was covered in all these starburst scales. Ooh. And um, so I've got these three fish. Paul's got two fish. It's just going off. And we're sort of trying to deal with the smaller ones. And I actually went, I want to do the common first because yeah. after I've lifted them, I'm not lifting this. Because you're going to be shattered. So we've got it out and um, a few people come around and say, oh, £75 that. And I'm thinking, I've I, this week I've seen a few 90s and I'm getting quite good at judging them now. And that's you a 90. You that's 90? Yeah, 90. So it's 90 pounds. Well, you might make 90. Anyway, it was 97. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. A 97 yeah. pound and common. Probably Ooh. like it was in such good proportion. You know, yeah, like so the mirrors are big, round, yeah, yeah, yeah. big fat things. Like, this was a solid 97 pound common light and um, beaut- probably one of the best carp I've caught in my life. You know what I mean? Like, I was going to ask you, where do you rank these in terms of like, because you yeah, caught like, some mega ones. Well, I mean, your original podcast, if you ain't listened to Dave's original one that you'd done with me, it could be a year, maybe two years ago nearly yeah. now, there's some, some incredible fish in there, mate. Yeah. But where do, where do you rank that? As Those? A, I sort of, I've got two. As foreign fish. Oh, guy, here we go. He sectioned yeah, them off. Yeah, he? as foreign fish, it's up there with the best I've caught. You know what I mean? Like when you think I've caught fish from all public waters this year, I've caught some really nice public mm. water fish that are going to come out and film next year. But um, yeah, because she's just perfect proportions. I don't mean where she's from or in regards to our arches. I just must, a perfect proportion. 
Where are you giving it overall? Mix the it biggest in with, common mix in the world. Mix in with everything. <laughs> where'd, you, where'd you put that? Mix in with all of them, It's mate. in the top ten. It's in, that's the a top, vague top ten. Yeah, it's in the top ten, ten mate. The first five are all British. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say you ain't having yeah, that yeah, in no, top They're three, all oh, British, yeah. mate, and then some of them are 38 pound. Yeah. Because they're just un, un, not not all car free. That's a bit of you, yeah. though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I get that, mate. I get that. But I get the way that you section it off, and I like that. But that that... That fish, that, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what I'd be doing at this stage if I'm two weeks in and I've caught this many big ones. I think it'd almost be like laughing. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Cause it, like, it was at that stage. You no, know, like you'd, you'd sit there every night. Me and Paul would sit there, we'd have a couple of beers and just laugh, go, this place is a joke. <laughs> How's this carrying on? Yeah, from, yeah. From when you put the bait out to when you get in your sort of first signs of fish in the area, whether that be poles knocking, yep. fizzing, whatever how how long are we talking sometimes honestly within 10 minutes oh my days on average we worked out it was 40 minutes to an hour and then you're getting some something yeah, an we, indication yeah we're getting three four bites like it just goes off they come in Mad. And what was happening i know it's other people who get one or two but where mm. i was putting this boily crumb in it was sustaining the fish in the area and um we was getting like you know seven or eight bites and sometimes a few days we didn't bait up we just went, no, it's not bait up today. Me and Paul reeled in. We went down the tan in Hungary. It's like going back to the 80s in Hungary. They've still got CNA stores and things like that. CNA? Yeah, yeah. The, like... Yeah, we went down. We, we found a little restaurant. We had something to eat. Candles. Paul was... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, yeah, come back, you know, all nice and relaxed. And that's how we are. Paul's just like me like that. When I go away, I, I, whenever I go fishing, you won't see me getting het up, you know what I mean? I'm like... Right, let's do this under control. You know what I mean? And that's the best way to be. The only time you're out of control is when you caught a hundred pounder, mate, by the sounds yeah, of yeah. it. And you had 20 litres of Jack Daniels. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, I was quite out of control then, yeah. What was the rest <laughs> of the lake like in terms of like the anglers that were about? Did you Obviously, you went round a bit. It weren't like you were consistently fishing it hard. Was it all pretty hospitable? Like mate, everyone yeah, pretty happy lovely, for everyone? Lovely, lovely bunch of fellas, mate, yeah. that week, yeah. And um, you know, it's like most, you do get the odd one on a trip, but... You always get a random, don't you? There weren't, mate. It was just a, a really good week, load of nice people, had a bloody brilliant time. You know what I mean? Mad. The the sort of rest of the session, what what was the sort of final tallies, if you like, mate? Um, so the, as the la- when we went to the last few days, um, Paul would really suffered on this snag. It was to his left and he lost... The same a, one? Yeah, he lost a massive fish on it at one point, really good fish. And um, the last 24 hours, Paul fished both poles because okay. we just wanted him to get another, another. He'd had loads of big ones, like, uh, just loads, you know what I mean? And um, I think he had a couple of 57s right. that last night. And I said, uh, I put one rod out and that went and it was like a 20, I think it was a 20 or a 30. It was like one of the smallest of the week. And I say, I baited this spot behind the island. Yeah. I say, so the last day, I had an 85. Which was that little boily rod? No, 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 another oh, eight. Like another eight. Yeah, yeah, another eighty-five. Yeah, yeah, pounder. I had an eighty-five. So I said to Paul, "Look, I'm pulling off of them. You put your rods all out on them. We've probably got thirty-six hours to go." And then I put the rod behind the island, and Paul went to me. Got a long drive. Don't be waking me up with a forty-pounder. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the rod's gone. It was probably about half four, five o'clock. Still dark behind this. I ran down. I've picked it up. Weirdest fight. Do you know when you hook a stick, right? And you cast against an island, you're pulling a stick in. Oh, look, man. And it sticks. goes at an angle. Yeah, yeah. It was going like that. And I thought, I've got a big old stick on here. It's like, oh, the fish has gone and left me in a stick. And it just came around. It went underneath Paul's lines. So I reeled down, give it a right good pull. And I felt a bang. And I thought, that was a head kick. It's come round, just flopped up on its side. And I'm like, that's 70 pounds. You know what I mean? Like, bang, just netted it. Paul went, is that a fault? If you're waking me up for a fault, I went, Paul, this is 70 pound, mate. You went, and then he'd get up. Like, so Paul's come down and we've weighed it. It was 85, 12. <laughs> What's he had then off those? Has he had no big ones off them? The, the... No, Paul had loads of 50s. He had a lot of 50s, yeah. 60s, 70s. I never had a 70 all week. He had an 80. And I, I had like, so Paul probably had, he had easy as many fish as me. What was he doing? Was he doing anything different? All I'm trying to think no, of here is I'm really. playing devil's advocate with regards to it. You're in the same swim. You've had, all right, you might have not have any any sort of 50s, but you've you've sort of gone, sorry, 60s, but yeah. you've gone massively sort of the bigger side of the th- of things. Rig-wise, you said you're fishing that, that blowback rig with your little sort of 
hook bait tip with maggots. Yeah. Is he doing anything different that you think? Not could really. To that? The only thing that Paul did used a bigger hook than me. He used a uh, medium so, curve size four, which is quite a long shanked heavy hook. Whether my hook was lighter, I don't think there was anything in it. I think sometimes your name's on them. You know what I mean? And do you I, think it was that? Hundred percent, honestly. Hook baits and everything the same. Look, I was doing all the casting. Right. Paul was doing all the wrapping. Oh, it was, God, it was like yeah. teamwork. Like the only thing I won't do is share rods. I've never been into that. You know what I mean? Some people go, oh, have every other bite. Yeah, I don't other do bite, that. Yeah, like, yeah. If someone caught the world record on my rod and rig, I'd be gutted. Yeah. So like, and Paul don't really like it either. So when we go, when me and Paul go, we fish our own rods. And if someone's spot is kicking off, we share the spot. You know what I mean? So you're both having a good trip. We had, I counted 77 fish, but Paul said you missed, cat. I probably did miss a few. So at night we was letting fish go. Yeah. And I'd say you could draw, almost draw a line down the fish. You know what I mean? We, I was having one, Paul was having one. I was having one, Paul was having one. As Paul said, you've just got golden bollocks, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I often, I, it's interesting when you fish like that, because obviously like you could go a different week Parameters are completely different. Within the same swim, parameters are different. But there's a lot of more constants if you're fishing the same swim together. Yeah. And it's interesting to see. I remember Al talking about Orellana with Samir. Samir not having as many fish, but he had the bigger fish. Yeah. And and whether it was something to do, Al put it down to basically using some new bait, that, um, some muscle blend that was in the bait that he used. Muscle blend's out now, so it's not new. But that being too attractive and the little fish coming in. But bait-wise, you're the same. Hook baits wise, you're the same, but yeah. you the same sort of tipped maggot job. Hook size was the only difference. No material difference. No lead system difference. No. no he anything? used lead clips for the whole no. session. I I used a, a the ru- the running yeah the running and a few lead clips. I kept a lead clip on one rod. Okay. And um, funny enough, the hundred came on um, a uni lead clip, but the ninety seven came on a running lead. Do you know what I mean? And the commons don't come out much. You know what I mean? They're, they're, mm. they're massive commons. They're the rarer caught fish in the lake. And when you're fishing there, the guy tells you, he said, that common I had, I think it's done a hundred pounds. Like it's one of the biggest commons in the world, but there's a <sighs> common in there. Like he reckons it's like one ten, <sighs> and they reckon at the moment, the big one could be one twenty. <laughs> and ridiculous. also what, what's a pretty common theme is a lot of them, like apart from the sheer weight and being able to hold you and sort of, stick themselves to the bottom every now and again, they ain't like tearing off, stripping absolutely loads of line, are they? No, not really. They're just plodders. Just like proper yeah. big plodders. I had a few, you know, you know like, probably the hardest fighting fish out of that week were mid-60s. Yeah? I had a few mid-60s that just beat me up. Yeah, bust. I was yeah, like, oh my God, you. one of them. I said to Paul in the end, this is getting on my nerves now. My back was aching and everything. It cut it was 61 pound, which it, it's a big fish. But in there, it's like an averagey, not average, but it's, it's it's a big fish, but it's fast and powerful and it's the zipping line off, you know, 30 yards at a time. Where these big ones, they're just, it's almost like I'm going here and doing what I want. And if you want to have the patience, you'll get me in. But if you don't, like a few people lost fish that week and I think they just got too impatient with them. And I was playing them, I was making them work, but I weren't pulling the reds off, you know. Well, and also by the sounds of it, like there is obviously a bit of lady looking there in terms of the old, the old snags, if they're kiting left on Paul, he's done, isn't it? Yeah, realistically, yeah. Yeah. like I remember seeing that in the old monster cart video as well. I think they lost a couple of good fish in snags. Well, I started they? off in the same swim as them. Did well, you? I, I, sorry, the swim they started off in was the swim we fished in. Right. Okay. And um, it's a very good, a very good swim. You know what I mean? But obviously, no, no uh, dissing on Neil and Tom. It's, no, I don't it's know. All about it's time, it is. yeah, it's timings, it is. isn't it? It's timings. If they had been there the week, two weeks, I was there. They'd probably had a fish I had. You know, you've said that from the timings. start. You yeah. said the Boydie Crum was an edge. You said yeah. like how you've approached it is same as pretty. You'd approach the same type of fishing in England, and then you said essentially what what's come together in the perfect storm is you've got everything right in terms of amount of bait, the type of bait, the timing, and the conditions, and everything's yeah. played into your hands, isn't it? It's one of them. It's UK style fishing. Yeah, the yeah. style of fishing is UK style. No, like if you, it's all horses for courses. If you go to a shanty cop and you're fishing 400 yards yeah, or yeah. braid, 10 ounce leads, it's not it's not UK style fishing. No, but you do it. If I went to uh, Rainbow, I'd be fishing 50 pound braid round the corner of an island because mm. that's what you do to get the fish. And um, I, li- I was listening to a match angler talk the other day, and um, he said a good angler is adaptable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is, yeah. So you just, every environment you go to, just adapt when you go there. Don't be like, 
oh, this is how I catch carp. No, you catch the carp, how they get caught. Did you see, Did you? I mean, I'm guessing you saw, obviously, the other anglers that are around the pond fishing it. Did you see anything miraculously different from everybody that would that would sort of equate to maybe changing anything or try? I mean, you were catching, so you ain't going to, yeah. but just a different style or a different way, like the Polish lads fished it to you? Because obviously, like you're saying there, that's not really dissimilar in terms of angling, apart from maybe the quantity of bait and how yeah. it's introduced to what you go and do at your, your syndicate. You'd find, you'd find a, you silt in the, in October. You know what? No, that, fish it that way. That lake I didn't, but I have seen some exceptional anglers in the last five years abroad. You know, yeah. like some people go, oh yeah, the English anglers are the best. And uh, one of them is a Nash angler. I can't remember his name. And he go, he, he's done the lake bled trip with you all. And he fishes Zajarki. He's done the late bled trip. Yeah, yeah. Gasper. My, I think that's it, yeah. Oh, yeah, Gasper. Oh, my God, that guy. When I was at Zajarki, I see him put a lead about 180 yards. Yeah. Put the rod down, pick up a spawn rod and land in the rings. You know what I mean? I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> God, but yeah, casting, like, that's always been, like, this is, again, another preconception of me, but from talking to people and doing podcasts, it seems that those European anglers, Hungarians and, and the likes of, where they fish those bigger venues where it is, bait is the yeah, feature, yeah. but they can fish it at range, like 180 ain't They're far. Well, well practised. It yeah, ain't yeah. far though, is it, no, for them? No, no, they're just whacking it out there. And you're like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I, I couldn't get nowhere near that. Mate, you know I mean? I'm yeah. taking a boat out, I still won't get near <laughs> yeah, that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there's some a, pr- a misconception that they're behind and they ain't. But you I think when I mean? it comes to, like like you said there, a lot of the key element is I know, you can go into that and I imagine a lot of people would, and I'll ask you a similar question about like recommendations for people that might want to go out there, but you can go in there thinking, oh, oh I'm fishing for 100 pounders, so I'm going to fish pretty crude, yeah. big old dirty great snowmen, like trashing a load of whole boily and yeah, fish yeah. it because they're big ones, they're going to get through it and... Do I'd you, imagine a few people fall into that trap. Do you know what, though? There will be a time of year where that is the way yeah, to fish it. Yeah, of course, it. of course. And that's the thing. Like When I looked at it, um, I just thought, I can imagine the spring in here. If you fished a zig, you'd annihilate it. It's open water. You could Mate. probably fish a 15-pound hook link, a size 6 hook, a dirty great bit of... You'd you'd smash the shit out of it, like, literally. I don't want to be. Fish, I don't want to be yeah. playing hundred and three pounder on a fifteen pounder up length <laughs> near some snags, mate, on a, on a ten foot zig. <laughs> but if you was fishing the right swims, you know, like the open because the swim pulls in wouldn't be. The, you'd pick the right area. Yeah, maybe swim five that gives you a massive bit of open water. Let them go. Yeah, you, you're gonna get them in. Yeah, you know let I mean? them like, go. There's ways you catch. Every time of the year is gonna have a different method, and we did the right thing at the right time. All the timing was good and uh, all the planets aligned and we had it off. Someone go in there? So someone wants a trip, someone wants to go and catch a world record or a hundred pounder. Yep. What would be your recommendations with regards to, to sort of that? Just contact them through Instagram and Facebook. That's the best way. There is a phone number, but it's Alex's and you're not likely to get an answer out of it. <laughs> but a few people have asked me since I got back and I've said, I'll oh, just con- contact them on Instagram or Facebook and um, they get back to you. And they let you know the bookings. And um, obviously, it's like Rainbow. When Rainbow is in its heyday, you couldn't even get near it. Yeah, of course. And I think it's pretty getting like that there now. Mm. But just remember, there's not a bad month. You know what I mean? Like, all the months that that's open, you've just got to fish a particular way when you go there. So if you go in the summer, you're going to be fishing boilies, you know what I mean, Um, maize and hemp. If you go in the winter, you're going to be fishing the maggot. So just be adaptable. So I say to anyone... Has he kept that maggot open? As in, like, is no, he still going? It's a winter thing only. Is it? Yeah, because he don't want them getting fed maggot all year. No, you know it's not going to help them, is it? No, exactly. So, like, there's the maggot season you can fish. Mm. But um, I'd like to go back. I've asked them if I can go back. You um, go back, yeah? 100%, yeah, yeah. Um, And I've asked them to go back, like, the last week because it's the hardest week. But if you're going to catch a 120-pound carp... That'll be the week you'll catch it. You know what I mean? One bite last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine it? Bosh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not going to be easy, is it? I suppose, as you say, but they will be big, wouldn't they? Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, just contact them through their social media and start saving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damage. <laughs> yeah. But you'd do it again in a heartbeat, wouldn't you, mate? Oh, mate. Yeah. So, you see, so life's about experiences, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean, totally. and uh, we're all going. We're all leaving the world with nothing except what we left behind. That's like. As a trip as a whole, as you say, like it's very rare in anything 
where you get sort of that sort of perfect alignment of everything. Yeah. And it actually works out. You can go yeah. on a either side of a of a new moon or a full moon. You can get great conditions and you blank. Do you know what I mean? Do you or know it's the thing is as well though. So and if you cart fish for like long enough, like I have, mm. every now and then you'll get a perfect storm and you'll get more than one of them. So you just yeah. gotta keep going and I see it myself, you know, like your skill sets, you just build them and build them and build them until you eventually you've got this massive knowledge that you have to put into everything you do. So when I get onto a new lake now, I've got all this stuff that's happened to me in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can pull on and go, that was like so-and-so. And when they've done that, they've done this there. And I've got this picture of what's going to go on at the lake. And the longer you do it, generally the more you're right, but you never know enough. Do you know what I mean? So always learn. Mate. It's, um, it's mad. It's just mad that we've actually talked about that in a podcast and of carp of that size. But as you say, like you said so eloquently and so simply in the podcast, they're just the same as every other carp. These ones are just the size of the safe you're sitting on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. ridiculous, mate. I, I think genuinely, like, the way you, like, approached it, the way you mentally approach all your fishing is for me, like a, a, a very clear distinction, but it's it was mega to see and just follow that whole week on that complex because it is, it is and as everything is, in, it's all, it's covered, people know about it, it's hyped up, world records are in there. You yeah. might see the odd shot on their social media every week of like a big one maybe, yeah. but you do not, I've never seen anything like that couple of weeks where you were there on that complex where it was just throwing up across, it seemed every swim, like big and after big and after big and so to be there and live that, yeah. I can only imagine the sort of scale of like buzz because it is dream come true stuff. Yeah, it is. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't know how you, how I would, and I'm putting myself in your position, but like I don't know how I would a ever go back. For me, that would be done. Yeah, but you want to go back and catch the world record? Yeah, you, <laughs> you leave me, and you probably will. But also, I think I would struggle in a UK fishing sense coming off the back of that, but you've got great compartmentalisation, mate. Yep. Must be the military man in you. It's just the love of carp fishing, mate. I yeah. love it, mate. Yeah. I definitely love it, but I think the that hit and that buzz, I'd, I'd need, I don't know, I'd need a little come down period, I think, yeah, for yeah. reality to kick in. But do you know what? Um, after catching Charlie's mate, when I caught that, it was weird. I sort of went, ah, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. all, do you know what? This winter, I'm going to have a few socials with mates. Too right, yeah. Because like when you, you're targeting a fish, I get quite fixated. I, I think I'll be laying in bed at home thinking, yeah, that'd be up that end. I, I literally, my brain does overtime. Mm. So every now and then, you've got to lay yourself a little step back. I've got a few pike I want to catch. I found out it was a couple of 30s. I'm going to go and fish for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Try, try and catch a 30 pound pike and do that. And then come February, I've got a fan, I've seen a common that I caught when I was about 16 at 12 pound. It's a mid 40 now and she's ancient. And there's a mirror that I caught 18 pound that year and they're still swimming around. And I thought it ain't about their size. It's about what they are. They're now 40 pounders, which is a big carp and they're ancient. Let's go and catch them. Mate, I can just tell in your voice, mate, the buzz is there regardless. Yeah, yeah, All I'm thinking about is these fish at the moment. I'm thinking they're swimming around under the ice. They're so old. I hope they're okay. <laughs> Long may that buzz live, mate. It's inspirational stuff. It's incredible, mate. Thank you for coming in, sharing it with these guys. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I'll be back soon with another podcast. Until then, make sure you check out Mr. Levy's video all about it because you blogged it like you yeah, say. I did. Um, and check out the photos on his social media, mate, because they're just obscene. You can't say baby shark, mate. They were actual sharks, weren't they, mate? Yeah, that's Ridiculous. Right. <laughs> uh, Levy, thank you for coming in, mate. Thanks, and sharing it. Cheers. Cheers, mate.